Hey everyone, my name is Katie and I am a fourth year first grade teacher and welcome to a tour of my classroom. This is actually my second classroom tour video because this is the second classroom I've ever taught in. I taught at the same school for three years previously and I will link that classroom tour above in the cards if you'd like to see it. A lot of the items in my classroom now are the same, um, just kind of repurposed or in a different place. So if you're interested to see how I set any of this up, I do have a classroom setup series and I will link that in the cards as well so you can kind of see how I decided where I was gonna put everything in my classroom. But today, this is a finished classroom. It is currently February, so we've been learning in here for a couple of months now. So I'm just going to tour you guys around. Keep in mind that it is um, in use, so it may not be perfectly clean, and it's the end of the day on a Wednesday. So it is what it is, but I can't wait to show you guys all of the ins and outs of my classroom. Let's kick this tour off with my teacher area. So in the corner of my room, I have my teacher desk up against this wall over here, and then I have my teacher table right next to it. This is actually the first year I've ever had my teacher table kind of connected to my desk in a little corner like that. In my previous classroom, I had my desk in the front and my table in the back. It has its pros and cons, but this is Miss Allen's area, so we don't have any students going behind the table. This is just my area. It is where I lead small groups, and I love a clean classroom, so at the end of the day, I make sure the table is cleaned off and ready to go for the next day. I really don't like to let stuff crowd up on that table. So taking you kind of back into the desk area. This is what my desk looks like. I've got my teacher desktop, my planners usually sitting out with the calendar and all kinds of things going on over here. So let's start. Okay, here's my letter board. You can do hard things because I need that quote this year. I also have my drink floaty that I use for iced coffee in the mornings. And then I have my teacher toolbox. I love my teacher toolbox so much. And I've shared this in my previous class tour and I shared it in a must haves video. It is amazing. I will link where I got the labels below so you can see that. It held up nicely during my classroom move. There were only a couple things like these brads um, were kind of everywhere, but I just resorted everything. So this is a must have if you're setting up your classroom and your type A love to be organized like me. I've got my cutie little unicorn that a student gave me. And then I also just keep my pictures up here of past classes and my husband and just everything that's near and dear to my heart. And then this is really cool. It's actually an eraser that my mother-in-law gave me and I shared this in my last classroom tour, but she has the same one. I'll pop a picture of it up here that she got when she was a teacher way back when. So she made one for me and gave it to me on our wedding day. So that's pretty fun. Okay, so then I got my teacher computer with my awesome background from Hey Ashley G. I love it, so cute. And then down here, I have my teacher is my superpower thing that I got from one of my best friends. She also gave me this, the influence of a good teacher can never be erased. So that was really sweet. Um, and then moving along over here, I have my teacher things container right done that I got from my friend Janet and inside I put peppermints because every morning our crosswalk guard gives me peppermints for me and for my team teachers so I put them in this jar and then once it gets full I deliver them to my team teachers and then looking in this little area um, this is kind of my catch-all so I had a lot of people ask how I manage paper flow here's one of the ways that I manage it I got this from Sam's years ago and anytime we get a paper of any kind that's from a meeting or something like that that I need to keep up with I just kind of put it in here and then every once in a while I will clean clean this paper tray out. So once it gets kind of full, I'm like, okay, I need to go through and sort those and I'll take things out. But then if I'm like, okay, where are those meeting notes? I know right where to look. I check in this stack. And if it's not in this stack, I've probably already organized it into another binder. This is also like a catch all tray. I've got thank you notes that people had given me um, a pack of Kleenexes, which I've actually never used. So I should probably move those to the back. And then, um, of course, all the trinkets that are collected during the day. Um, you know, if you know, you know. <laughs> and then my back wall. So I'm going to show it to you briefly in this next clip, but I might have to put some... Um, things over it for privacy reasons. This is my teacher bulletin board. Some of the papers are covered up for privacy reasons, but this is where I hang schedules and reminders and feedback notes and anything that I need. This is like my teacher's central bulletin board. Here's how I organize my desk drawers. This one's kind of a hodgepodge. I have tape 
highlighters that wouldn't fit in my toolbox, and thank you notes in this one. This is my emergency drawer, because <laughs> I have my emergency toiletries in here. 10 out of 10 would recommend. I have like extra deodorant, Q-tips, perfume, feminine products, etc. My emergency snack container, chocolate, chocolate, chips, chocolate, extra mask. All of my emergency sub plans are stacked in here. And then this is just where I put random copies, things that I need to sort. So this is kind of like my quote unquote emergency drawer. That's what I call it. Over here, everybody has to have a good junk drawer. Here's mine. <laughs> yeah, mm, yeah, not much to say about that. Tons of sticky notes, index cards, name tags, and my webcam because I don't like leaving that plugged in all the time because the cord has to go like, whoosh, covers the whole desk. So there's my junk drawer. Also my like doorbell box, pins that don't fit places. Yeah. And then down here, I can't really show you this one because I have my student files and then I keep my curriculum here. And I guess I can show you because it doesn't have any student names on it. Um, I just do them by number so I can reuse them every year. Again, I just have sticky notes. And then I keep all my Avery labels back here. And I use those often. So that's kind of how the drawers look. Okay, moving right along. My next bulletin board in the front is my calendar area. I have our daily schedule. Our Hawks Creed that we use for our school. We say that every morning during the announcements. Then I have our calendar, which I got this cute rainbow holder from Target this past year. So I've loved that addition. And then I also use this to hold our wish well, which is where we put people who are absent in the middle of the heart and wish them well in the mornings. That's from Conscious Discipline. And then our whole group behavior management system is up here, our oh yeah and oh oops points. I've shared that in a previous vlog, so I will link that above if you're interested in learning more about that whole group management strategy. So this is kind of the calendar central. Above, you can see I have my Christmas lights and then my alphabet hanging all along this wall. Zooming into the table, um, these are objects that we observed today in science, so that's just random stuff up here. But I keep a container full of pencils and markers over here ready to go, crayons in case I need to use them to model anything. I have equity sticks with all my students' numbers on it, and stickers that I can give them celebration stickers if they're doing a great job on the carpet. I also have our pizza pointer that I got from the Target Dollar Spot. We use that anytime we're pointing to the calendar, and then behind the calendar live the birthday sunglasses that my students wear when we sing to them when it's your birthday. Then moving to underneath the teacher table, I have a three-tier drawer. On top of it always lives my math curriculum book and my example math workbook that I put up on the screen. This drawer is empty because I was using it for intervention and now I'm doing intervention a little different. So we did have like intervention cafe and I had activities in there, but it's empty now. So can't wait to fill that. And then I just keep our Wonders Writers Workshop and the literature anthology books right here. So they're easy for students to access. And then when we finish a unit, I swap those out. Moving to the side, here's my wonderful smart board woohoo um i have a love-hate relationship with it <laughs> it's great to have a smart board and i've never taught without one but this one can get slow and laggy so that's kind of annoying um below it is where i keep our center rotation cards so the students can check their number and see which center they are going to i made a whole video in my vlogmas series about how i do center rotation so i will link that in the cards if you are interested in learning more but it's a great central location in the front and moving to the side, this is where we keep our word work center labeled to match the front. Our five star sit posters that we went over at the beginning of the year are still there for reference. This is our learning board where I hang anchor charts. And then my wonderful um, easel that I have over here. Doo -doo -doo. And markers, so all of that. That's kind of like the front of my room. Also, there's my classroom doorbell right up in the top. I kind of love having it up there because it doesn't fall down and where I had it last year, students used to kick it because it was under a counter. So love having that up here. And now let's turn to the wall of cabinets. This section of my room took me the longest to set up during classroom setup. If you followed along during that process, um, you know why. I am gonna show you inside the cabinets. Some of it's organized, some of it is kind of like organized chaos, so bear with me. The front of my big wall of cabinets houses my sound wall. This is something new that I implemented this year because we are focusing on the science of reading and trying to implement that with our current 
uh, curriculum, and then next year we're adopting a new curriculum that is even more aligned, so I'm pumped for that. Um, I will link this resource in the description below if you're interested in getting the same sound wall. It's great. I love how colorful it is because I'm just all about the colorful things. But here are my digraphs over here. We have the vowel valley. I think I'll also try to link some articles with like research about the Val Valley and all of that stuff below because I can't explain it perfectly, but there are people online who can. Um, our R controlled in the middle and then our diphthongs are over here. So that's the vowel valley right there. And then if we turn to the side, we'll see the consonant cabinet. So this has all the consonants sorted and we don't do as much with this in first grade because we're more focused on vowels. I think kindergarten does a lot more with the consonants, but they are sorted by the different kinds on the consonant cabinet for reference if we need them. All right, so taking a look inside of this cabinet, Doo -doo -doo. All right, this is where I store all of my supplies. I have extra Dollar Tree bins at the top. This is an overflow of markers because my marker box is completely full. These are the supply boxes. I actually got my first year of teaching and I've never changed them and they still work great. I believe they're from Walmart. Just, um, I don't even know what brand. It doesn't have a brand, so I don't know if they're rubber made or what, but glue sticks, markers, rulers, crayons, everything in its place. Um, this was just a cardboard leftover from Walmart, and so I've used that to hold sit spots. Um, I have some globes and some extra name tags, and then these are pocket charts that I'm not using this year. Going down to the next shelf, now I wish I could have put these on the middle shelf, but if you watch my classroom setup, you could see that um, these aren't adjustable, so I couldn't fit all of those right underneath. So we have this lovely shelf in the middle that kind of breaks it up. This one has my birthday pencils and birthday cards. This bucket has all of my calendar stuff, my anchor chart markers, the Polar Express is in there, <laughs> and then my paper drawers. So handwriting paper, story writing paper, which I'm almost out of, and notebook paper packages that are opened. And when we go to the next one, there's the scissors, colored pencils, pencils, erasers, sheet protectors, and then this is my um, crayon shoe box. So anytime we find lost crayons, or if I give my students new ones, I put their old ones in here. That way, when there's a student who says, I lost my green, I just pull that out and give them a new one. Then I've got paper supply down here. When that notebook paper drawer is starting to get empty, I take this and I will pour some of that in there. Um, those are leftover journals. This is all the Astro Bright paper I have. And then this top one is construction paper, whole sheets. And then the bottom are like craft sheets. If we made a shape and we had extras, I put it in here. Um, or if we have pages that we've like cut out of or just strips or paper. This is like all the cut up paper that I've saved to use for other crafts. And these are whole sheets. Then down here at the bottom, I am now sitting on the floor. <laughs> I have a basket full of stamps and ink pads. This one has, oh, I didn't even know I had stickers in here, actually. Um, that's cool. So I have leftover stickers, as you can see. That was like kind of organized, but also didn't know where it was. And shaving cream, um, clothespins, and duct tape, which I have used frequently. And then these are all of my banners. Right now I have the Valentine's one up over there. And here are all of the ones that I have like for all the seasonal holidays. Also, I've seen this tip on Instagram, but pro tip to hang your bulletin board things, binder clip and command hook. Love that. Let's look inside cabinet number two. This is where I have most of my phonics stuff, and I've shared this in a previous vlog as well, but these are my phonics bins sorted by alphabet, fluency, blends, vowel team, sight words, digraphs, short vowel, CVC. So this is something I've been working on as a work in progress this year, because previously, which I'll show you in a minute, I had all of my phonics resources sorted in these filing cabinets based on wonders unit but as we're moving away from wonders i've been taking things out and sorting them based on phonics skills so when we went over diagraphs i took out all of my diagraph activities and i put them in here so here are reading cards that we did some center activities posters that i used for diagraphs and then i have folders in each of my buckets and they are labeled where's the label on these here we go so decodable texts are in this one and then word lists are in that one so every bucket ha and then i also have some decodable books back here every bucket is kind of organized similarly you can see the baggies with all the centers in them decodable text and then there'll be like word lists what is that decodable text this one oh it won't focus but it says center recording sheets and then um, decodable text and word lists so that's kind of how I've been organizing it and I've been slowly moving things over throughout the course of the year 
the top is a bunch of curriculum stuff and stuff that was left in my room. So that's just stuff I didn't know what to do with. The sides are kind of like, oh, I don't have a spot for this. Let's cram it in there. So these are extra magnets. Actually, I should probably put those down here like with those stickers that might be good um i have lots of dry erase markers lots of dry erase markers in here so extra ones um that's like a sight word center with beads that's why it's in here but it couldn't fit the bucket um moving on down i have extra containers and buckets and things in here these are the locks that we use to lock sounds on our sound wall these were things that were left in my classroom, sequencing cards, word building cards, um, and I just kind of organized those and put them there. This is kind of a hot mess, <laughs> so bear with me, but again, more reading resources, letters, um, and then empty containers down here. Thanks, COVID, for all the individual stuff that we don't need as much individual of anymore, but that's where my empty containers go. Next cabinet. This one is the wonders cabinet. I will not show you much of it because it's a mess. Again, top cabinet is just random stuff that I don't know where to put that was left in my classroom and I don't know if I can get rid of it or if it has to stay. Second shelf. This is where the literature anthology and reader writer workshops go. This is empty because I have all of those in drawers. Okay, and then plus some other PD books like conscious discipline books. These were my sound cards that I used previously on my focus wall, but I'm not using them this year because I have the sound wall. Next cabinet, more readers, writers workshop, and then more teacher's editions for science. Next shelf, your turn practice books, which I don't use as much because we're only slightly using wonders, so we don't go over all the wonder skills. More anthology books. Next shelf are leveled readers, which I also only just put out in the library for them to read as they like. I don't use them in small groups because they are not decodable texts. Bottom shelf, all of the interactive read aloud cards that come with wonders, which I don't typically use them, to be honest. I use the stories in the books up here, and by the time I do explicit phonics and the workshop story, well, that's about all the time we got. So that is the wonders messy cabinet. Moving right along, this one is also kind of a hodgepodge. It's semi-organized. These are my unit containers that I use for math. So I have my ripped workbook pages in here and I'm also starting to sort center activities. So in the unit one box, I currently have adding. In unit two, I currently have subtracting. These units used to align with an old math curriculum. I don't wanna throw the labels away just yet, but it no longer applies to this math curriculum. Next shelf, kind of an assortment of things. This is that counting days of the the year and I didn't do that this year in my Halloween jack-o'-lantern but then I have some number recognition activities counters and counters and more counters a lot of dice and containers to put the dice in and then flashcards I found so many flashcards in my classroom and if you saw my setup videos again you saw me time lapse sorting all of those and it was quite the task these not the flashcards, but everything else is like my personal stuff in here. So that's why it's separated in this cabinet. Some game boards that I actually need to put in a unit, a shape unit. So I might take like unit three and make that shapes. Again, more flashcards. They're in a separate bucket because I was setting them out for my kids. Random bingo that was left here. Amazing foam dice that were in my classroom. Love that. And then this container just has a lot of stuff from my old room that I didn't hang in here, which I wish I'd hung this. It's my environmental print al alphabet. I love that so much. Anyways, so those are just in here for another year if I want, or I don't know. Going down, here's our curriculum stuff. So here's all my TEs and extra student workbooks in case I need them. But at the end of the year, I'll just pitch them if I don't use them. All of my eraser manipulatives. And then kind of just like some random stuff. These are the supply crates that I used last year for COVID, but I'm not using them this year. So they're just down here. A random box of stickers. This is just random, like totally random stuff. And then I don't even know what that is. I didn't even know that was down there. So there you go. That's just stuff that has to stay. Last big cabinet. This one has more of the math supplies that belong to the school. So up top, these are all things that belong to the school. Oh my goodness. There's a bucket of cubes. I forgot that I sorted those and put them up there. Uh, counting bears, the, what's that called? Balance, more bingo games. I could probably add that adding bingo up here. And yeah, so that's just kind of like an assortment of things, a solar system. Now this took forever to set up, but I took all of these boxes 
that had just like a hodgepodge of all these things in them, sorted everything into its own box, and then added labels to them so I could find them. Yay! And then some of it was still overflowing. Like, we had way too many foam shapes, so we just kept those there. Um, this I put my name on because that's my personal stuff, and so are these spinners. So, there's that. Um, and again, more green containers, more foam counters, 2D shapes, coins, all of those things that were all mixed together. So I sorted them out. This has all of my 2D shapes, foam blocks, and then these two are like my personal ones, but these came with the curriculum. And then down here are the 3D shapes sorted by set. And moving down again, here are cubes. These are my personal ones right here in the bags. Um, and then the rest of them were in the classroom. And then this is a set of 2D shapes, which we didn't even use in the 2D like shape unit. So I don't know, that was just here and I put them somewhere. Then we've got clocks down here, more foam shapes. And then these are all my foam cube manipulatives. So yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in this cabinet. And if I like back up, you can tell that it's semi-organized looks much better than it did. Let's just say that. On top of my cabinets, random boxes, my Christmas boxes back here. This is a box I use to move classroom stuff and then chart paper, empty bookshelves. And then this little folder, let me see if I can step on a, on a chair to show you. This is just like a picture moving thing. And inside my mom and I slid all of like my anchor charts that I have laminated. Like that one's cause and effect the writing process, just anything that I made and laminated, I slid in here so I could use those later. Like all of these on the back wall, they were in here. So there you go. Moving on to the next section, my arm is here to block, but I have my How We Go Home. And it's got like, you can't see the names right there, but clothespins showing how they go home, my safety vest for duty. Um, and then here are the files that I was talking to you about. So I used to keep all my stuff in Wonders files. There it is. Oh by unit. I still have the worksheets in there, but I'm slowly removing the centers. And then my bottom file is all sorted by theme. So there's the 100th day, Halloween, Project Lead the Way, which was science, Zoo Day, Going Green Day, Camping Day, Extra Writing Plans, Spelling Test Templates, Pumpkins, you name it, Black History, Polar Express, it's all in here. And pro tip, if you hate doing these labels or you don't have them, because I hate doing them, um, just use a sticky note. I mean, shoot, that's <laughs> so easy, so quick. And then I can find anything I need for a theme day right in here. Okay, continuing on, here's my little thing that I use during lockdowns. I had a nice lady make it for me. It's got magnets in it and the door is magnetic or usually the window frame is. So it hangs up there with magnets. And then when we're done with the lockdown, I just kind of tuck it back up under there. So I'll fix that later, but that's what that looks like. Right there, I've got our emergency procedures hanging. And then again, I'm gonna show you this next part with a block. So obviously there's a big um, blurred spot here, but this is where we put all of our friends and family pictures that my class has brought in. It's such a cute space and they can see all of their classroom friends and family. On the next wall, I have our phonics posters hanging up top. And then this is where my students' cubbies are. All of them are labeled. And then I have empty spaces up here that my practicum students use to put their things um, then this is just kind of a hodgepodge of random stuff. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to pass by that. Um, I can't show you my class job board because it has the students faces on it, but it's so cute. It's right up here. I hang it on the magnetic door by the bathroom. Here's our bathroom pass and our end of the day chart. I just put it there once we had gone over procedures and that's going to take us to this side of the room. Welcome to the other half of my room. Again, these cabinets took a long time to organize. If you wanna see some of the decision-making process and how I decided what to put where, you can see that all in my classroom setup videos, but I will show you what they look like right now. Sink, cabinet underneath the sink. There's cleaning supplies in there. Cabinet above the sink. More cleaning supplies and tissues and Otoban and wipes and all of those good things. Just makes sense to me to have that above the sink. Moving to the next one all of my paper goods in one cabinet, extra masks, plates, napkins, forks, spoons, knives. Anytime I get something like that from my classroom, I put it here, Ziploc baggies, more Ziplocs and empty cups or containers. So all my paper goods go in the cabinet. Next cabinet, love this one, my craft supply cabinet. 
It looks very similar to what it looked like in my past classroom. The bins are from Michaels. I use them to organize everything. So pipe cleaners, string, paint, tissue paper, pom-poms slash foam stickers, beads, straws, command hook things, um, just an assortment. That one's kind of like a variety. Cotton balls, craft sticks. Yeah, all of that good stuff. So I'm very proud of how organized that is. Next cabinet over. These last two are like our indoor recess cabinets. So I'll just kind of show you the inside. Puzzles, Legos. It's not super duper organized because we take stuff out and put it back in all the time, but it all has a home. So I'm okay with that. And then the next one has more indoor recess and some Cheez-Its that I just didn't know what to do with. So there's, and then this is where I keep my sticker store stuff. So Yep, there's all that. I have a lot of stuff on the top of my cabinets back here. If we look, I've got games for my game club because um, I borrowed a lot of those from other teachers, so they're not mine and they don't fit in the cabinets. Writing lap desks that we don't use right now, and then just empty bins that I couldn't fit anywhere. Looking down here, I have my student mailbox area. If you are a new teacher, I definitely recommend finding and purchasing a mailbox. I've used it every single year. Students have their stickers and then I use the top ones to store empty things like here's where I store our blank celebration charts for when my students fill theirs. This is where I store our blank like uh, communication parent log things. This is where I store extra homework or homework that I'm going to pass out the next week. And anytime we send a paper home, I put the extras up here in case there's a student who says I lost that. Pencil sharpener is back here as well because only Miss Allen touches the pencil sharpener. If you teach first grade, you know why that's important. Safe space is over here. It's kind of a combination of the rug with the affirmation mirror. And then here's our conscious discipline safe space board. Oof, I need to dust it off. There's like a bug on it. <laughs> wow, we haven't used it if you can't tell because I need to like have more professional development on how to implement it. And I got some this past week, I'm dumping the bug off. It's kind of nasty. Um, I got some this last week, so I feel like I could start a plan to implement it, but I calm. This is how I feel. I choose what I want to do, and then I solve the problem. Um, and then I have a bucket full of all kinds of sensory things, like crayons if they need to journal, a timer, an I spy thing, a squishy. Yep, so that's back here. Affirmation mirror, which is not very selfie friendly because I have to like squat to see in it but that's okay it's for my students not for me so if I put it higher my students can't look in it so there's that here's our sticker store area I love this three tier thing I got it from a retiring teacher top one I just keep extra chargers right now honestly um because yeah <laughs> this is where I keep my laminated sleeves and extra whiteboard materials and then the bottom one is clipboards Chromebook, oof, Chromebook containers over here. I keep these prepped with math materials for any math lesson we might need. I'm gonna leave those right there. Um, our classroom library, which is a hot mess, is this little area so they can come pick out books and use a pillow from over here. And then I use these wonderful curtains to hide all of my junk. So <laughs> behind them, chapter books my students won't need, science books that go with curriculums we don't use, and um, nonfiction books. Then moving over to this one, I hide all my classroom library. I have a whole video on how I did that. I will link it above. It seems to be the theme of the day. Um, but there's my whole library organized alphabetically with our spine labels. And then moving over to this cabinet or this shelf, I have my student data binders, old binders from an old math curriculum, and then student supplies, like if they brought folders or binders with their names on it, I keep it there so I can access them if I need to. And again, just a bunch of empty book bins because I used to use those before I alphabetized my whole library. So this one holds glue because the glue doesn't fit in my glue box and I just put it there. Welcome to first grade life. These are books that only I read and I don't put in the library because I use them as anchor texts for different lessons. And then that brings me to the back counter. I have this lovely display and I put our sight words of the week in it so kids can read it all the time. Behind it, I hide our math journal questions that I have prepped for the week. This is where I stack their math journals once we finish them in the morning. I keep out all of these Michaels buckets and I keep math games in them that we're working on. For example, we're working on counters in a cup. So all those supplies, task boxes. So we're ready for the math games. Roll and subtract with our number lines. 
our dice backyards. Oh, that one's empty. I think these are supposed to go in it. Our dice backyards so they can shake them and roll the dice. And those stay with the games. Cubes that I use for whole group stuff. And then a variety of games for my friends who are still learning numbers. Number recognition, counting games, stuff like that. Uh, these are some wonderful cards I got from TPT. Just some decoding cards. And I keep them up here because it's really cute <laughs> to see the rainbow. And I use them in small group, which happens right here. Another question I got was about more paper flow. So this is where I keep my paper. My old classroom, I had a whole cabinet that I kept paper stacks in. I don't have that anymore. I sort things by drawer for the day of the week. So that's already sorted for next week. Let's see if I can find like um, this. I kind of stagger stack it. So those are the things. Um, up on the top, this is where I put copies for the next week. So once I run them off, like this one is, this whole stack is for next week. And now that I've run them off, I stack them on top of the left side. And on top of the right side, I have all of our assessments stacked because, like, we get them copied for the next five weeks. So I just stack the assessments here. It doesn't look the prettiest because it's just paper stacks. I could get, like, a tray for it, but it's not a big deal to me. Over here is future copies. Over here, future assessments. That's how I organize it my printer and then the last section is just this like small group area over here which I know a lot of you guys asked about so I will share that with you now this is all the stuff that I use at my teacher table often hole puncher stapler one pair of scissors markers because I have markers in every container all around the room because I'm always grabbing a marker to grade or check something extra expo markers and this awesome stamp this is how they completed things then the next drawer another empty drawer so hallelujah i can figure out how to use that next drawer i keep assessments so things that i assessments that i need to grade and then this is empty blank assessments that i use for their data binders and then bottom drawer i don't know what's in the bottom drawer oh um more assessments so they're both just like assessment drawers i could probably organize that better honestly and then my small group cart this thing is overflowing, let me tell you. Stickers, because I use that as motivation for small groups. Um, sight word cards. I always have a bunch up here because all my kids are at different places for sight words. Color cards that I use for some activities. Um, sight words. I try to keep my like sight words of the week right here on the outside so I can see them. A, a broken timer I need to throw away. My small group headband is up here at the top for right now too. These stickers need to go over here. I keep all of my student whiteboards up top because we use those frequently and I need to be able to grab them easily. I keep all of our markers and erasers we use at small group right here. And yeah, so that's like the top shelf, everything I access every day. Middle shelf I use for paper copies that we're using. Like this week we're doing all of these roll and reads. And then I also use it to stack any kind of dry erase sleeve that we're using. So here's a decodable text we're using this week. Here's like our poppet activities that we do when we're doing phonemic awareness. So I keep all of those there and my letter trays underneath and they just kind of sit sticking out like that so it's easy for me to go to and grab them. Also like flashcards if I need more extra room. Bottom again is a mess. I used it today. Dice, pom-poms, all kinds of little manipulatives that we use when we're reading. Little eyeballs we use when we're reading, trackers we use when we're reading, witch's fingers we use when we're reading, and then just extra empty containers and tin frame stamps. I don't know why those are down here. Um, and then pointers. I don't know why all my pointers are here either. I think I've had them like play a sight word game where they have to point to the sight word, so that's probably why those are down here and not like tucked away in a cabinet. And then I have two buckets, which I honestly want to find the new... Oh my gosh, I know what to do. Instead of having this... Now, you guys just help me organize. Thank you. I should just put all these poppets in this drawer. Okay, here's a time lapse of me doing that. Woohoo! That makes it so much nicer back here. And then I can take this basket and I might take it home. And I need to wash this, honestly. And then this bucket was for when I do my intervention group because kids don't come to my intervention group. They come from other classes, so they don't always have their supplies. So I keep crayons back here. That way they don't have to go get their crayons every time we wanna color something. And same with scissors and glue for doing a cut and paste activity during intervention. They don't bring those things with them. They just bring their computer and pencil. So I have that in there along with some sight word cards. This was just all stuff I was using for intervention. So honestly, I can sort that out and keep, I'll just keep that there. It's a little less crowded. Um, Cause this is like back to my teacher area where we started. I always keep my tripod, my backpack and my lunchbox like tucked. This is kind of sticking out. 
more than I usually have it, um, tucked back here under my desk so it's out of the way. And yeah, here's like a quick pan of what the room looks like again. Okay, you guys, that was like a super detailed classroom tour. I feel like I showed you every single square inch of my classroom. Oh, except my student desks. They're in groups in the middle and they have baskets underneath that they keep their Chromebooks in that are Dollar Tree baskets that are zip tied on there. So there you go. I have four, how many groups? Five groups and I call them by color with these pom-poms that are up above. So I'll say pink group may line up, green group, blue group. Yeah, so there's that. Okay, now I have shown you every single square inch of this classroom for sure. I hope you enjoyed this classroom tour. I hope it was helpful for you guys if you're setting up a classroom or you're trying to figure out what you want to do in your classroom. Again, the classroom setup series shows more of the ins and outs of like how I decided where I was gonna put things. So feel free to go check that out. I love watching classroom setup videos at any time of the year. It doesn't have to be back to school. So I like for it to be neat organized and colorful. Those are my three things that I go for. So I hope that came across in this tour video. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and click subscribe below. I post so much teaching content, not just my classroom. I share vlogs and tips and all kinds of things. And I'd love to have you follow along. That is it for today. I will see you guys in the next one.